Hi, this is Paul Bowerman of Bowerman 939 of the Brigham Tea Company. I'm going to do a video here on how to harvest and cook and eat. Um, we used to, we've always called it pig, pigweed greens, but they're, it's actually a wild radish. You can see that right there. And they just grow wild, but uh, they get a lot bigger than this. But these are the ones that are the best eating these. These ones are about this size. And kind of like, uh, they got a, a sharp little thing on the, the, not a thing, it's like, it's scratchy on the back of them. And you, you probably wouldn't want to eat these in a salad because of the scratchy wood. So you kind of have to cook them like a green and I'll, I'll, I'll find some bigger ones and show you what they look like that you'll be more noticeable in my area. Now, I don't know if they grow in any other areas or not, but uh, they're a pretty little plant when they're young. And they some people, uh, boy, they feed them to their chickens and they feed them to their livestock. Almost all animals like to eat them. Anyhow. Uh, this is uh, kind of like the part one. I'll tie them all together in one good video. Hi, this is Paul Barron again. And uh, this is the uh, series or uh, video on. Sorry about the car in the background. Uh, this is just right out in, the, out in my yard or the, you know, the back area of my place. And uh, this is what it looks like. We call them wild radishes. And uh, when you pick them, yeah, you will find that there's a little white part on the bottom that is the reddish part, the radish part. And uh, when, when you try this, it, this part tastes like radishes. Uh, or turnip, maybe more like a turnip, but and, and the and the tops look like turnips. Tops. Uh, I was taught from a very young age to don't waste any of the greens. My mom always cooked all the we cooked. If we had turnips, she cooked the turnips, and then we boiled the greens and made greens out of the. Or she'd fry them. Here's a little bigger one. They they just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger as you can see and they'll they come up here in southern nevada uh pretty much any times it anytime it rains they'll come up and uh, very nutritious but like um, like any other wild edible you want to take a little tiny bit of it grind it up in your between your fingers and rub it on your wrist about right below where your watch would be and let it set for an hour and see if you have a reaction and then like any wild edible take a little tiny bit into your mouth don't swallow it and then because even if it's edible for everybody else it could be give you an allergic reaction so be careful when you're eating it, wild edibles and uh, be very careful but there's plenty of food out there to forage dandelion greens same thing i love them i eat them raw i eat the root i eat uh, the leaves i put leaves in salads i cook them dandelions are one of my favorite foods uh, and like any other thing that's good for you it's a little bitter bitter foods generally are you have to have bitters in your diet. Anyhow, we'll see you on the next part of this video. Alright, so this is what the plant looks like when it gets a lot bigger. This is almost going to seed. You see how it's got little blossoms on it and stuff. It, it's going to be pretty tough. Uh, it won't taste as good as the other, but you could always eat it if you wanted to. Anyhow, uh, I'll show you what the root the root looks like on this one. And 
there's that part that tastes looks like and tastes like turnip uh, you could eat this uh, especially out here on the ends of the leaves but uh, and especially these smaller ones down in the center but and if you feel the back side of them they're really uh, pokey almost like uh, a little bit like uh, Oh, uh, stinging nettle. Anyhow, good morning. This is uh, Paul again. On the, uh, we're gonna utilize the, the what my family called pigweed greens. I think they're actually a wild um, radish. Anyhow, well, not every morning, but a lot of mornings I. Uh, make a blend of a bunch of stuff that I have and and these little little greens from the pigweed and I I've got a I'll have a whole video on it I put them in my uh, bullet blender in this bullet blender I have the pigweed greens I have some dandelions I have some uh, cabbage leaves I have uh, beet greens, I have uh, a mint, uh, lemon balm, uh, I have yellow dock, or some people call it uh, um, curly dock. I, have, I also put Brigham, or not Brigham, tea. yeah, sometimes I put Brigham tea in it. Uh, sometimes it's got uh, lemongrass, and then I put, uh, um, I put some, um, dang, um, I have an old man brain fart here. A, um, I put, uh, uh, Bure's yeast and beet powder and a little bit of molasses and some homemade yogurt. Uh, I make the yogurt, I, I, uh, any excess milk we have or if I've been milking somebody's goat, I'll uh, use that and I just a lot of times in there when it's warmer weather I'll just put it out in the sun but this batch I had to put in the oven real low real low temperature and it turned uh, yogurt and it's delicious it's almost like a, a vinegar anyhow uh, that's another part of this whole video thanks I'll 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 make it up and send it out Okay, this is what it looks like after you blend it up. It's just uh, like a green smoothie, only it's bitter. Uh, the, the maple syrup makes it tolerable, but this is a pretty drink, bitter drink. Uh, we didn't have insurance when I was a kid, none. My mom was a, uh, my dad had passed away and we didn't have any insurance. And she'd give us this every day. We hated it because it tastes nasty, but uh, here we go, bottoms up. Good morning, this is Paul Bowerman again, and uh, this series is on the pigweed greens. Uh, I'm going to show you how to uh, clean uh, pigweed. Uh, it's actually a, a wild reddish, they call it. The, the most, probably the most important thing uh, to start with is to wash it really well. Because uh, you're, you're, it's a wild edible. And you're washing really well with cold water. And uh, to me, this is the size that's a little bit um, too much, but uh, it's a little too old. But it, it'll be okay, especially with the recipe I'm using. But this is the part that tastes like a turnip. I'm going to show you right here. Yeah, it tastes a lot like a turnip. And if you like turnips, that's good. Now, this is the size that I like the best. And it makes sure it's cleaned up. And I just cooked the, on these, I cooked the root, the root, 
the turnip part and the leaves and it makes a, a really tasty because this part of it's tender if it gets if this gets very old the root part it gets kind of stringy i mean it's still edible but it's not as good as uh, then what i do is i take and i well first thing i do is get rid of all these little dead pieces that are inside and now remember this kind of has like stinging nettle but not nearly as as intense as stinging nettle but it kind of has scrapey parts on the leaves so down here by the the root part i just cut it off throw it away and then that that will be the part that i'm going to fry i'm going to fry it today and you know anytime you fry pretty much anything um if you fry it um, with uh, bacon or sausage or anything like that with some onion and some garlic, we'll go through that whole process. Uh, like I said, this is the size that I like the best to cook, uh, whether I'm boiling it or frying it. But today we're going to fry it and uh, I need to use up some sausage. This is another good size, not too terribly big. Uh, you can see how big they get. I, sh I show in the previous part of this video how big they get. Uh, they get humongous. That's a nice one. That's a nice one. Uh, that's a nice one. And anyhow. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our pan going. And we're going to put a little, I have learned to love coconut oil. Uh, coconut oil, it, it almost is like a uh, Crisco or uh, something like that. And I just put some in the pan and get that warming up. The uh, sausage I've got is pretty mean. And uh, this is a homemade uh, spatula that I have, that I made on a hunting trip with my grandson. Uh, it's on one of my videos. We stayed in the teepee that whole hunting trip. Had a lot of fun. Uh, anyhow, this is the spatula. I'll never get rid of it. So the first thing I want to kind of get going is the, uh, the sausage and get it browning. And so this is a homegrown sausage uh, made from our local, by our uh, local butcher, Odell, Dick Odell is his name. And he does a lot of butchering for us in this area. Good guy, charges a reasonable price. Uh, anyhow, so we'll get that going. But it's really lean, this uh, pork that we raised, really lean, so I, I decided because I want the, uh, the, the um, pigweed greens to really have a kick, I, I'm adding, uh, or you know, to taste decent, because no matter what you do, that plant is going to be a little bit bitter. So we're going to saute some onions, we're going to uh, uh, um, uh, look at that, that, that bad, that middle is kind of bad. We'll get rid of that, keep working on this. You don't have to have a lot of onion, but you want onion, garlic, um, one thing that I have figured out about cutting onions so you don't cry is to wear a safety glass or glasses that wrap around your face. That that keeps the, the acid that's in the onions out of your eyes and when it doesn't when it sprays up it doesn't make you don't cry. And that's a great little trick that I learned years and years ago. 
what I didn't learn by my mom because my mom was always crying when she's doing uh, maybe she's crying because she's having to feed me but anyhow um, so I've got a little of that gonna have some garlic gotta have garlic garlic is the, the spice of life get all that going there we go you got to get them uh, what you want to always kind of flatten out garlic and get them uh, all them good substances that are in there that going yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah, we'll check see how it's going. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Sometimes if I don't uh, check this out, the camera stops on me. And see, like this part here, that's nasty. Get rid of that. You're probably thinking, oh, you could probably cook. You could probably pick any weed and cook it like this. And you're absolutely right. You probably could pick any weed. I know you can do dandelions the same way. And they are delicious like this. And you can do a curly dock this way. And you can do, uh, or uh, what if you want to call it, yellow dock. Uh, any of the green yard type. Uh, herbs that grow in your yard you can cook them this way and they are delicious yeah you might lose some nutrition by frying it uh, but uh, boy it sure is good tastes yummy and you want to make sure especially with pork is you get no red no red meat you want to get all that meat cooked right down brown to the point that there's no little red dots in the meat. I don't know if you can see me, I don't know if I'm blocking, maybe I better turn over here, sorry. I probably was blocking the view. Now it really doesn't take long once you uh, get your, all your spices, you know, one spice that uh, all cooks love is pepper gotta have pepper this good old black pepper and i like uh garlic powder and i like onion powder and it probably won't hurt this dish to have a little uh uh, vinegar uh, an acid of some sort so we're going to add a little rice vinegar and you can see I don't measure anything uh, let's see Ooh, I love ginger we're going to put a little ginger alright Sorry, I'm probably blocking the camera. Better check, see how the camera's going. Oh, uh, yeah, everything looks good. All right. Now, this part of it looks... And what's funny is you probably just eat this as a meal, and it would be delicious, but you wouldn't get as nearly as much nutrition. I might... Start cooking some of these. I'm just going to throw these ones with the little tiny roots, the little tiny um, uh, uh, radish or turnip or whatever you want to call it. On the little ones, it's delicious. Well, I like turnips and I like radishes. So if you don't like turnips and you don't like radishes, uh, you're probably wasting your time. Okay, got the rest here. We're gonna, and, it, and it cooks way down. Yeah, there's probably plenty. 
we'll, we'll, I'll use a different recipe for the rest of this. Okay, how we doing? We're looking good. Love my little spatula. Better turn this all over. Kind of keeps turning around. Alright, let me tell you what else I'm going to add to this. I like Tabasco sauce. Add a little Tabasco sauce. Oh yeah, that's smelling good. And I'm going to add a little bit of hickory smoke. Oh yeah. I wish we had smell-o-vision. Because that is smelling good. Oh, you know what else? I'm going to put a liquid, little bit of this uh, liquid uh, uh, aminos. And it's, uh, it tastes just like soy sauce. It pro uh, it's probably made with soy. I'm going to put a little bit of that. Anyhow. It's, uh, it's a kind of tight quarters in my, this is kind of my test lab. Because uh, my regular, my wife's regular kitchen, I don't like to cook in there because I make sometimes some stuff that stinks up the whole house. And as you can see, this is starting to wilt a little. That's what you're wanting. It's looking good. Looking good. Really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be yummy for my tummy. And you can see I, I like food. And I like to be able to go out and harvest wild edibles, make something useful out of them, cook them up, and eat them. So I call this the pig wean. Now you can do this with bacon too. because Bacon works just as good. Uh, but I just happen to have the sausage. It's uh, so I got a little story for you there. Uh, what happened was, is a friend of mine, they knew some people that had a pot belly pig, and it was a little tiny pot belly pig, and it was so cute. And they'd take it everywhere like one of them purse dogs, and it was so just always shivering. And, and then, about four months later, this thing was huge because what they do is they, build, they breed these pot belly pigs with a regular pig and they get a lot of piglets out of that regular pig and then they sell these pot belly pigs for like they're like they're like they're going to be tiny miniature pot belly pigs and they never are and they always end up three three feet long and eating like a horse and people don't want them so my friend went and got that Pig from them and said, Oh, yeah, we'll take good care of it. And blah blah. Yeah, they had it butchered. Ended up with about a, oh, maybe a hundred pounds of meat. Anyhow, this is some of that pork, and it tastes just like pork. Pot belly pig tastes just as long as it's not too old. As long as it's six or eight months old, it tastes like pig. Anyhow, I will plate this and give it a try here's my little plate over here pause this i love this cooker it's a i don't know what the name of it is it's a um a, uses like a magnet because the pans have got to be um, All right, here we go. I'm gonna use chopsticks. Big weed greens. Oh, 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 no. mm. oh. that is fantastic. Mm. 
Mm, mm, mm. Right. That is incredible. You would never know. You go out, pick out these wild edibles, learn how to cook them. Uh, uh, mm, mm, mm. Man, that is so good. So tender. Mm. One more bite. One more bite. Mm. Mm. Man. A little bit of pork. A little bit of onion. Mm. All right. So that's one way to cook pigweed greens. I'll, I'll have another part of this video show you another way to cook pigweed greens.